Now for our speaker, I just wanted to boast very briefly, I, I, I was reminding myself sitting down here of the speakers we've had since we've existed, it is pretty good. In no, this is not in order of, cast in order of appearance or, or indeed sadly in some cases disappearance, um, but um, they are Lord Guthrie, Field Marshal Lord Guthrie, P.D. James, Debo Devonshire, John Snow, Mary Keane, Tom Stoppard, Mervyn King, Richard Charters, Lucinda Lampton, Edmund Duval, and without wishing to be divisive, Boris Johnson. Um, so I think that is a pretty good, um, as it used to say on the front page of the News of the World, all human life is here. Um, and uh, the, our, our guest um, today is uh, no less distinguished, and I'm particularly personally thrilled uh, to have Matt. He really only has one name. And in a way, he's only ever done one thing, but it's an absolutely wonderful thing, which is to do these superb daily cartoons in the Daily Telegraph. And uh, I had the great honor to be his editor. And I like to claim that I played a very small part in spotting his talent, because when I was editing The Spectator in the 1980s, uh, Matt started to appear a little bit in our pages. Um, but of course, we couldn't pay him properly, and he was stolen by Max Hastings uh, more than 30 years ago, and has remained a daily ornament to that newspaper ever since. Um, Matt lives in an old, is it a rectory or vicarage? Rectory. Um, but I won't say any more because he's going to tell you all about that and all about cartoons and whatever he, else he wants to say. So please welcome Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, over 30 years ago, uh, when I started appearing on the front page of the Telegraph, I drove uh, to Kent to visit my parents who lived in... Oh, sorry, I should stand near this, shouldn't I? Uh, so I drove to Kent to visit my parents. So this is over 30 years ago. And they lived in a... Uh, a, a, a small terrace of houses and I, we were sitting in the kitchen chatting and there was a ring on the doorbell and it was the next door neighbour and he came in and he said, um, although it's a two-way street outside, I like all the cars to be pointing in the same direction and your car is pointing in a different direction from mine and I'd like you to move it so it's pointing in the same direction as mine. So I decided to move my car, but I decided to draw him on the front page of the Telegraph every day from that moment on. <laughs> and so and I put him in a scene, increasing scenes of humiliation. So this is one when the, uh, there was a doctor's strike. I drew him like this. Uh, uh, there's a doctor. Uh, and... Um, when, the, um, when there was government advice that we should all have a, a health MOT, I drew this cartoon. Uh, uh, is your body actually two write-offs welded together? Uh, um, uh, and then uh, th there's one more of these, the poor chap. Uh, th there was another thing when we... Uh, renewable energy was the, the thing we were all talking about and I drew him in a hamster wheel. Uh, um, but something very strange has happened over the past 30 years, which is that um, a, a bit like uh, owners begin looking like their dogs or the other way around, that I've turned into this man. And now all his hopes and fears and anxieties are mine, uh, and chiefly amongst those, of course, uh, 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 bin collections, which um, is all I think about these days. And this is my favourite cartoon. This is really me. This isn't him any longer. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> the, the caption is, I know you're excited, but the sooner you go to sleep, the sooner it will be bin day. Uh, uh, there's an, uh, I had to just put in another bin day collection. Uh, this was a bin man saying, it will be two weeks before I can see you again but I do see some people privately. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, th there were th just two other obsessions that uh, uh, petrol prices and house prices were the, another thing that I do a lot of cartoons on. This is 
look what someone gave me in exchange for our house. And uh, on switching energy, I'm thinking of boiling the kettle, what's your best price? Uh, um, I, I get into the office um, sort of fairly early every day, about eight-ish, and I go and bother the newsroom and ask the news editor what's going to be happening uh, that day and he usually tells me to go away because it's too early and uh, I, I have a huge A2 sheet of paper and I write down every possible subject that I could do a joke on, a, a bit of that's cut off and I write the subject at the top, for the last two and a half years it's been mostly Brexit but I write at the top and then I just try and think of as many jokes as I can on every subject and I set myself little tasks uh, and so if there's a, 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 the gents loo is on the opposite side to my desk and I think well between my desk and the loo I'm going to think of one more joke on Brexit uh, and I, so people see me walking very, very slowly around the office, trying to think of another, or on my way to the coffee machine, I'll try and think of another joke. And uh, the idea is that sort of by the middle of the afternoon, I should have six. Um, and I, I have a sheet, which you won't be able to see, but there are six little rough drawings there. And it's amazing how often I'll have five drawings and I'll just need an extra one for the sheet and it, I just think well just one more idea and that's the idea that gets used and it, it's, it's just that sort of extra little push um, that often does it and it, another thing about being in the office which I love is that I can show them around the office and ask people um, what they think of them and they're, they're, they're a kind of people who will uh, uh, tell me they like them all and then there are slightly more honest people who will get, uh, tell me which ones they don't like so much uh, um, but it, it's you do you do get sort of showing them around the office you do get a good idea of what uh, what people like people have noticed that often in a joke I combine two subjects and it's really a process that sort of sheet I had of ideas that you uh, there was one day last year when I was trying to think of jokes about fishing rights uh, to do with Brexit and then that was on one column and then in another column I was trying, th I think Michael Gove had decided none of us should be using plastic straws so of course inevitably I came up with this joke which is after Brexit I don't want EU boats coming into British waters and catching all our plastic. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, which it was just one of those days when two, the two subjects seemed to come together uh, perfectly. Um, but you, you do get into the habit of having, uh, having ideas and I have been doing my very best to help out Theresa May uh, sort out the uh, Irish backstop and uh, I've done four jokes, four versions for her of this. One was the island to have imaginary hard border with mime artists. Uh, um, I thought instead of a hard or a soft border, we could have a bouncy border. Uh, um, there the, was the Canada, the, the Canada star Brexit, which I thought maybe we could have uh, Canada geese will control the Irish border. And then when Meghan announced that she and Harry were going to have a baby, I had somebody it's not for the royal baby, I'm knitting a soft Irish border. Uh, uh, but uh, so, uh, she, Theresa can take any of those ideas, I'm happy to donate them. Uh, um, one mistake people often make about me is uh, that they say I'm very nice, but I'm absolutely beastly to the Liberal Democrats for some reason, because they've done, never done anything to hurt me. But I, I, I pick on them terribly. And uh, there was, uh, I've just got, I've got rather a lot of examples, I'm afraid. But it was when they had a conference, a uh, Lib Dem conference, expect unusually light traffic. Uh, 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 when Charles Kennedy stepped down, I had, uh, it looks like a contest between the Lib Dem big beasts, Thingamy and what's his name. Uh, 
I can't actually remember who those were either. <laughs> uh, um, and this was, uh, uh, I'm a liberal Democrat. I'm neither to the left nor to the right. Uh, um, uh, and, um, this was an, uh, another liberal Dem conference when the, um, uh, uh, Another conference when the, the, there was a shortage of flu jabs. I, I haven't had my flu jab yet, so I've come here to avoid human contact. <laughs> uh, and the, the last one on this subject was when uh, Kim Jong-il died and there was public grieving. And then the second one was UK, Nick Clegg to give speech and public <laughs> grieving. And his office telephoned me and said... Um, would it be all right if Nick used that as his Christmas card this year? <laughs> so, uh, um, the other person I haven't been terribly kind about is Jeremy Corbyn. And that wouldn't have been such a problem, except that uh, last year, for my 30th anniversary on the front page of the Telegraph, the paper made rather a fuss and uh, some uh, ju journalist was given the job of phoning politicians and asking them to say some, something kind about me and of course the first thing the politicians say is will you send me some cartoons he's done on me and so uh, Corbyn asked <laughs> to see some cartoons I'd done on him and uh, the, the following two were the least rude ones. The, uh, there was one on his opposition to the Trident submarine. We did it to annoy him. Uh, and the next one was when he was accused of meeting Czech spies in the 80s, I think. Uh, I met Corbyn. He told me his runner beans are doing well and he might plant some courgettes. Uh, anyway... Corbyn decided not to contribute to my 30th year. <laughs> uh, um, uh, if you've, I've been doing uh, six cartoons uh, for the Telegraph and Sunday Telegraph for 30 years. And it, it, in that time, everything that possibly could go wrong at some stage has gone wrong. And uh, there are a few, th few examples here. Since 2000, everything's been on computer, but which has its own problems, but uh, before then, the caption had to be printed out and glued on to the bottom of the cartoon before it went to the printer. So, of course, one day it fell off. And I have no idea what that was about, but it, uh, uh, the readers thought it was a competition, and uh, they'd r write it with suggestions. Uh, um, in 1995, I did... Uh, this joke about cuts in the army uh, I'm going to make civilians out of you lot which uh, you might think is a pretty unmemorable joke and you'd be right because I accidentally did it exactly the same again in 2010 <laughs> I'm going to tell you horrible and you should get used to it because it's due to appear in 2025 again uh, um, the um, uh, on a Friday um, on a Friday, I have to do a cartoon for Saturday's paper and a cartoon for Sunday's paper. And uh, I think it was last year, uh, I, I was chatting to the people in doing the Saturday front page and they said, well, we're going to be doing a lot on the VW diesel scandal, so that would be great to do a joke on that. Um, and the Sunday people said, well, uh, the Houses of Parliament are being renovated and there's they're going to be a lot of work. So, you know, that would be a very good subject for a joke. So on Saturday, with the VW scandal, this cartoon appeared. <laughs> <laughs> and with the story about the renovation of uh, the Houses of Parliament, I had the VW D diesel grid girls. Uh, but I don't think anyone seemed to notice, so it didn't matter to... Uh, uh, it does occasionally happen that things go right as well, and not as frequently as they go wrong. But uh, um, there was a story in the paper about the um, uh, the Russian Navy being spotted in the Channel, and I was trying to think of a joke about this, and um, 
I thought, well, uh, what would it be like if you were on one of those Dover to Calais ferries and you spotted the Royal Navy, uh, the Russian Navy? And I drew this cartoon, which is, the captain has sighted the Russian Navy. England expects every passenger to do their duty. <laughs> and I got some letters a few days later saying I thought it was a wonderful tribute to do that cartoon on Trafalgar Day. <laughs> 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 I, I said, well, I didn't want it to go unmarked, but obviously I <laughs> had absolutely no idea it was Trafalgar Day. And the other thing that worked in my favour, only my favour, but not the England football team's favour, is that last year we met, uh, uh, we got through to the semi-final and we were, um, we were playing uh, Croatia. Were we playing Croatia? Yes, I think we were. And um, uh, I, I knew it was the knockout stage. And I thought, well, there has to be a result. It can't be a draw. And either we're going to get through to the World Cup final or we're on our way home. So I thought, well, I'll think of some jokes about us winning and some jokes about us losing. And uh, the truth is, it's much, much easier to think of jokes about things going wrong. And I had lots and lots of jokes about us being knocked out. And I was it, finding it harder and harder to think of a joke about us winning. And the match kicked off, I think, at about 8 o'clock. And I was still sitting there with... Uh, uh, I had my lose joke ready, and then England scored a goal. So I thought, I really do have to think of a joke about us winning now. Uh, but then luckily, Croatia equalised. <laughs> and then at the last minute, we were knocked out and there was silence in the office apart from a little cheer from my corner because I, I thought this was... Uh, Mrs May said it was a good outcome and it gave us most of what we wanted. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, I was very, I was thrilled. Uh, Gareth Southgate, I'm sure, felt differently. Uh, the the um, the next. I have told the next story too many times, but I'm going to tell it again. Which is that uh, after I'd done this cartoon about the Secret Service, it's the security service. It's, if you're looking for your glasses, they're beside the sink. <laughs> and when this cartoon appeared, uh, the editor at the time called me into his office and said um, I've just had Sir John Scarlett from MI6 on the phone and he, he wants you to go and see him and I, um, I it was arranged for the following day and you had to take my passport and there were just extraordinary levels of security and I was at one stage standing in a glass tube for longer than I wanted. And then uh, I went up to the top floor and was waiting in a, in a little room and somebody came to get me and said, Sir John, we'll see you now. And it was a vast office with the Union Jack fluttering outside the window, looking over the Thames. And in the corner was his desk and he took me over there and on the desk were all my cartoons and he picked them up and said did you do this cartoon I said yes I did do that cartoon <laughs> and he went through them and he's at the end he said well we'd like you to do MI6's Christmas card please <laughs> <laughs> and he said we're nothing like James Bond we don't find that funny at all so don't do anything about James Bond but when it's done don't mark the envelope and dial 008, something, 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 and somebody will appear at your desk and collect it from you. <laughs> and I, 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 um, I did a couple, actually. I did one that he sent to some people that had a spy on top of a Christmas tree. It's a bit too small, but there, there's a spy on top of a Christmas tree there. And then for some other, uh, some other people he sent himself making a snowman on the MI6 building. And my most prized possession is a letter from 
C, this is in green ink, saying format with thanks and best wishes, C. Uh, uh, and it was an absolute thrill. Uh, um, uh, we now get to the bit you've all been waiting for, which is my rectory. Uh, um, so in 2010, um, we bought the rectory in Ricking Hall Inferior. There is a Ricking Hall Superior, uh, but they won't mix with us. So we're in, uh, <laughs> we're in Ricking Hall Inferior. Uh, um, and the local church is St Mary's with a round tower, which we're very proud of. Um, and the, uh, we found a, a photo of our rectory when it was covered in vines, which was lovely. And that was amongst stuff that the previous owner had left behind, including a box file about all the previous occupants. And uh, it was fascinating because there were details of the rackety rector of Ricking Hall, who, uh, who used to travel from Dis, uh, which is the local train station, to London to meet ladies of easy virtue. And uh, um, one, on one of his visits, it all got a little too exciting, and he, he died in the arms of one of these lovelies. And th you won't be able to see, this is from John Bull, uh, the magazine, with the details of the inquest. <laughs> uh, and uh, there were, we also found boxes of letters that he'd sent to some of his lovely ladies, uh, where he asks if he could maybe, they'd like to bring a friend along in the afternoon. Uh, um, uh, and there was the most extraordinary um, coincidence because there was a man, uh, a colleague at work who used to sit behind me and every Friday I'd say to him, uh, well, have a lovely weekend and he'd say, are you off to Suffolk? And I'd say, yes, see you on Monday. And um, he, uh, after two years, he said to me, when you go to Suffolk, where are you going? And I said, well, it's Ricking Hall. And he said, it's not the rectory in Ricking Hall, is it? I said, yes, it is. And he said, um, my grandmother's mother was uh, the rackety rector's daughter. <laughs> and um, uh, he, I asked if his grandmother would like to come and have lunch at the rectory. And uh, she, she said she'd love to. And it was, it was obviously still a little raw, this <laughs> subject about the rackety rector, but she did have some more uh, uh, letters and fascinating bits of correspondence. Uh, and um, it, it was lovely for her to see it because she'd never, see, never been in the rectory, so it was, it was thrilling. I, uh, I was trying to think if, because before I bought the rectory. We'd lived in London all our life. And I thought, is having a has, have any of my jokes changed, having a rectory? And I thought a few of them, ha I, there was one in particular that it, I noticed in village life that if there's, if ever you need your hedge cut or a mole murdered or a cesspit emptied, there's always a man in the village who'll do it for you. And I... I was thinking about this at work, and there, I was trying to think of a joke about the government's latest um, health advice, uh, which was that you should have two alcohol-free days a week. And I thought of this joke, which is, it's important to have two alcohol-free da days a week. We employ a chap in the village to do ours. <laughs> and and um, I, it was... <laughs> it, it was... It, I have to sign prints for the Telegraph readers, and it's the most popular joke I've ever done, actually. Uh, um, uh, the other thing about uh, living in Suffolk is we now have a vegetable garden, so all we talk about is watering the vegetables. And uh, there was a drought, and I, th I thought of this joke, which is strangers on a train. It's the perfect crime. I'll water your garden and you can water mine. <laughs> uh, 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 and the, the other thing that's happened to us uh, since we've had the rectory is that we've got a dog. So uh, I'm afraid I've uh, uh, 
drawn my dog a couple of times. And the first one was when Mrs. May was having trouble getting rid of some cabinet ministers. So this is the man saying, I'm not going to ask him to move because when he refuses, my authority will be weakened. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, um, and the other one was a, a poisoning at Crufts. Uh, this is taste the dog's dinner to check if it's, be, if, check it's not been poisoned. Uh, um, the, 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 the other thing that's happened to me that's, since I've had a rectory is that I've had my first ever cartoon rejected and told it didn't quite <laughs> fit the bill. And this happened a few years ago when someone in the village discovered I was a cartoonist and thought I might be up to doing the parish magazine cover. And um, they, they asked me if I'd do the Valentine's Day cover. And so I'd been thinking about it, and I thought, well, I know, I'll draw, you have to draw Cupid for a Valentine's Day cover. So I thought, I'll draw Cupid, and wouldn't it be funny if Cupid was shooting an arrow so at someone in the countryside who was shooting? So I did him shooting arrows at a man with a gun who was shooting a pheasant. And I didn't hear anything for a while, and eventually my nerve cracked, and I, I telephoned the man and said, you know, I did send you the cartoon, I wonder if you saw it. And he said, oh yes, we can't use that. <laughs> and I said, oh really? Why? He said, yes, shooting ends on the 31st of January. <laughs> and, uh, and I think he got a man in the village to do it instead. Uh, um, I th rather than end on failure, I thought I'd end with my... Uh, people often ask me my, what are my personal favourite cartoons and I've chosen three, just three very different ones. Um, the first one was when, uh, a, it happened a few years ago, uh, somebody discovered a watercolour by Adolf Hitler <laughs> and it, was, it, was, it sold for quite a lot of money and it was, it was sort of a passable watercolour, it was better than you might expect. Uh, did this joke? It's pretty good, but you're no Adolf Hitler. Um, <laughs> and I thought it's the only time I'll get Adolf Hitler into a caption of a cartoon. Uh, the next one I had to, I was going through some books to find some cartoons, and it, this one actually made me laugh. It was when um, uh, there was, uh, they thought they might have to ban darts in pubs, and there was a campaign to save darts. So I had a petition, save darts <laughs> petition with the names all this. <laughs> and the, the final one is when I write down all the subjects I can think of jokes about, occasionally there's one subject and I think I really, that is too sensitive, I can't go near that. And it was uh, when France decided to ban the burqa and I thought I really shouldn't do that. And uh, eventually I came up with this joke, which is a policeman chasing a woman in Bunker through a nudist beach. And <laughs> I managed to get no complaints at all. So uh, um, anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.